Good morning once again. Glad to see all of you here this morning for our first service of the day and uh, welcome you to our worship with the glad heart uh, and um, with joy in the Lord for bringing us together. We begin on page one of the bulletin or on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. Come, let us adore him.
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 8. Let us say together Psalm 25. O Lord, I lift up my soul, my God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be ashamed. Let the, let the treacherous be disappointed in their sins. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and of my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his life. He guides the humble in the right and teaches his way to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accordance and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, through, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say together the canticle, a song of Christ the servant. Christ suffers for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you have trained like blood, but now have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered him, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into heaven, the heaven of God, kingdom of God, ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. 
let us say together Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the God, be the, Lord, the God, of, God Israel. of Israel. He, he has come, come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, Savior born of the house, the house of his servant, servant David. David. Through, Through his, his holy prophets, prophets he promised to hold that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my you child, child, shall be called the prophet, the prophet of, of the Most High, high. for you will go before the Lord, Lord to prepare his way, his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some of you know that the year before I went to seminary, I participated in a program called Life Together, the Episcopal Service Corps uh, project in Boston. Their mission is to prepare individuals for service in the church and in the world. And a cornerstone in forming people to do that work is by having them live in intentional community with one another. Now, I don't know how many is the most uh, roommates that you've had in your life um, but I had seven that year, and let me assure you that that was six too many. <laughs> Before I started the year of service, the notion of intentional community was a romantic one. I pictured long and earnest conversations with my seven housemates, late night talks about how we would change the world, and mutual discernment about how God was calling us to follow God's self in our lives. Learning I was going to have seven housemates should have been the red flag, I suppose, but suffice to say, the year was incredibly hard. We labored to construct a housing covenant together, a set of ideas and practices we all committed to live by during our life together. We had to compromise in order to write the thing, and it didn't deal with romantic ideals of humanity, but instead mostly with who was going to do the dishes and when. It turns out that living in community with people is really difficult. It's probably an understatement to say that this country has had a hard week. It's had a hard month, really. It's had a hard year. So much has happened that is out of our control. A viral pandemic, the deaths of beloved role models and leaders, the chaos of an unstable democracy. But I wonder if the hardest thing to cope with in all of this, at least it has been for me, is that it seems like we have forgotten how to be in community with one another. Never have we felt so divided as a people, and the lines in the sands that are being drawn are being drawn also in communities of faith. I have never struggled so much to connect with my Christian brothers and sisters who interpret their lives of faith differently than me. This is, of course, not a new phenomenon, Paul would not exhort the Christian community in Philippi to be of one mind if there wasn't some disagreement either in that community or another. More recently, social media has allowed us to connect more directly with one another, but has also enabled us to filter out contents we consume that we wouldn't want to hear otherwise, as well as people that we might not want to follow. Over the last few months, I have heard again and again from you and from friends of mine stories of how we used to be able to talk to each other about things that we disagreed on, that we used to be able to work through difference. 
inherent to Christian life is the belief that it exists almost exclusively in the context of community. We are bound together in a common life beginning in baptism that initiates us into a new family, the body of Christ, where I am more inextricably linked to my fellow baptized Christian who I couldn't have less in common with than an unbaptized person who agrees with me on everything. We have, of course, a commitment to love the whole world, friend and foe. But we have a particular commitment to those who we are most closely linked to in the sacraments. And these relationships within the body must inform the relationships with all of our neighbors. We don't necessarily need to agree, and unity cannot be mistaken for justice. But what is necessary, both for community and justice, is love. What kind of love? The second chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians contains the famous Christological hymn, lauding the sacrifice of Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If we truly did desire to be in a deeper uh, relationship with one another, it is this mind we have to adopt, Paul says, one of sacrifice, humility, and the self-emptying love of Christ on the cross. We know this. We also know that it's extremely challenging. In life together, in order to be truly in community with my housemates, all seven of them, I had to reveal myself to them, my fears, my desires, what got on my nerves, what I enjoyed. I didn't really know these people, at least at first, and it felt vulnerable and quite a bit risky. I had to expose some of my brokenness, and this is not something that the world teaches us to do. Similarly, it's challenging to be in community with those who we might otherwise not deem worthy of our attention for one reason or another, opposing political views, outward appearance. Jesus commands us, of course, to love God and to love neighbor with all our hearts. Loving God is risky business because it leads us to places we wouldn't otherwise choose to go. And loving our neighbor is risky because it is vulnerable. But there is a reason the two great commandments are given together, because just as God so loved the world that God came among us in Jesus to take on the same joys, pains, longing, and suffering, and love, that we experience every day. So we can love each other when we take on that same mind of God embodied in Christ. This love can turn the tables on a world which is built upon competition, ambition, and conceit. It turns the tables on cultures of despair which try to suffocate the possibility of hope. Just like the kenosis of Christ paradoxically gains him the name above all names, so our adoption of the same mind can paradoxically, paradoxically transform the world around us. We will find true joy and peace only when we submit to one another, Paul says, rather than seeking to dominate. When Jesus is confronted by the chief priests and elders, it is because he has just ridden into Jerusalem the day before and drove out the merchants from the temple, overturning their tables, before healing the blind and the lame. When Jesus rebuts their question with one of his own, he is turning the tables once again. He understands that the chief priests and elders, those deemed righteous followers of their faith, were not actually concerned with his authority, but instead feared for their own. They thought they had it all figured out, but Jesus was revealing them otherwise. They had rejected what they knew to be right in favor of the comfort of the status quo, a system where not everyone was treated equally. This has nothing to do with the perceived failure or inferiority of Judaism and everything to do with what happens when we get too comfortable with power, the power we wield and fail to act on, when we confess, when we fail to confess what we believe about our religion. When I finished life together, I thought I had it all figured out when it comes to community life. How could I not with all those roommates? But of course I didn't. 
I had to learn some things. I had learned some things, but I had to continue to act on them in order to delve deeper and deeper into the mystery of Christ revealed in my neighbor. The parable Jesus tells us is such a simple one, but it is utterly piercing because it reminds us that words and beliefs are never enough unless they are embodied in action. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, will you do something for me? Will you do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God? The first son said, no. But after a little while, he realized that he should, and so he did, and he changed his ways. The man went to the second son and asked him to do the same, and he said, of course, what other way would I live? But seeing that he had already put a sign in his yard saying all were welcome, he refused to help someone the next day in need and withheld love from another out of anger. Which of the two did the will of his father? The idea of the last being first and the first being last, the idea of the first being last and the last being first is a good one. The idea that all people are created equal is a great one. But if they only remain ideas, if some remain only three-fifths as worthy to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, if the powerful exploit the weak in action or in action, then they are merely just that, ideas. I wonder if the most important detail in the parable this morning is that the righteous son failed at first. And so will we. And that's okay. God loves you just the way you are. So much, in fact, that God isn't going to leave you the way you are. We must never be afraid to change our minds if it means converting ourselves to the mind of Christ so that God will work more fully in us and through us, transforming us day by day into Christ's likeness. Let us allow Christ to more fully take possession of our hearts and to never despair that the world is beyond redeeming whether from plague or division. Let us cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, that on the last day when Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead and all will be made new, we may rise to that life immortal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let us join together and give voice to the faith that it is within us and which makes us one family and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor and in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold and pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you as we begin our intercessions and thanksgivings to use the group chat on uh, the sidebar uh, to... Uh, offer particular prayer requests. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For Rob, our bishop, for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rob, our bishop, for Mike, Greg, and Nancy, our clergy, and for all the holy people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Chris, our governor, Jim, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations and for all who have been entrusted with authority over others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Nashua and for everyone who lives and works here, 
that we may live in peace and in the service of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have entrusted themselves to our prayers. Let us Charlie and Dana, for Trish, for Megan, for Elissa and Maisie. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. Let Lord. us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life. Thanks, O God. To you, O Lord, our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked for in faith. Grant that we may obtain an effect as may be best for us and to the glory of your most holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I will uh, unmute everyone and uh, invite you to, to uh, uh, join in, in your uh, expressions of, of peace to one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also, and also with you. Peace and also with you. Oh, God's peace, everybody. Good morning. Back with Joe. Peace. 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 All right. I'll I'll uh, ask you to mute yourselves back up for our our uh, closing prayer and blessing, which is found on page seven in our leaflet, uh, or um, at the close of the morning prayer liturgy in the, in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us bring all of our prayers and thanksgivings and um, praises together and say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.